Hi there, Medical Wildcats. I'm Joseph Guggenheim. I'm a 1972 alum of the medical school. And this month's presentation is on Cracker Jack, which I'm calling the Chicago snack because it originated in Chicago. July 21st is National Junk Food Day. And last year in July, I talked about the Curtis Candy Company, which made Butterfingers and Baby Ruth's in the shadows of our Streeterville campus for many, many years. Chicago was a major center for candy makers in the early 20th century, and immigrants, especially the Germans, brought over their candy making skills. Also, Chicago was a railway hub and brought in milk, sugar, and corn syrups from the outlying areas. The Germans especially were noted candy makers, and they continued their role in this capacity in the United States. German candy making skills and equipment were highlighted at the German pavilion in the 1893 Columbian Exposition. One of the German immigrants who brought his skills with him was Frederick Rukheim. Frederick was born in Japins in Germany. He was loyal to Prussia in the Prussian-Austrian War of 1866 and then emigrated to the United States in 1869. He worked on his uncle's farm in Washington Heights, a suburb of Chicago. After the 1871 fire, Frederick went to Chicago to help clean up. He invested his savings, which amounted to $200, in William Brinkmeyer's popcorn stand, and they operated in a back room making popcorn in a molasses kettle with a single popper. Brinkmeyer left the business, and Lewis, his, Frederick's brother, immigrated to the United States to join him. The company was named F.W. Rukheim and Brothers, and the brand was Reliable Confections. Frederick was responsible for the overall strategy and marketing, and Lewis was responsible for the manufacturing. They bought a candy company uh, and candy making equipment from a Dutch confectioner who wanted to go back to Europe. And this is a picture of their factory in 1871 on East Van Buren in what is now the Loop area. Frederick challenged Lewis to come up with something uh, out of this mess. They were selling popcorn bricks and other popcorn related products at the time. They then moved to a larger factory at 266 South Clinton Street, but the factory burned to the ground in 1887. No one knows the actual cause of the fire. Perhaps it was due to children playing with fireworks or arson, but the brothers rebuilt and upgraded their equipment. The legend is that Cracker Jack uh, was uh, made its debut at the uh, 1893 Columbian Exposition World's Fair. But is this true? There are several legends. The first and probably the most popular is that the brother's product was an instant hit at the fair. Another theory is that their brother's product was a flop at the fair. And another one is that the brothers did not even have a presence at the fair. So let's look at the evidence. The company put out a history of their uh, company called 50 Years, the Cracker Jack Company, and they did not mention the Columbian World's Fair. There was no mention of Cracker Jack in books that were published at the time. The brothers probably made up popcorn and molasses product, which was a sticky mess and difficult to eat. So they were in business in 1893, and they probably had a presence at the fair, but it was not selling what we know as Cracker Jack. In 1895, after the fair, the company opened a new factory at Displane Street and had a sprinkler system and industrial equipment so that they could make four and a half tons of confection a day. A friend from church, Henry Eckstein, joined the firm as a company treasurer and invented the waterproof wax container in 1899, which is still in use today. The name was, of the company was then changed to Rukheim and Brothers and Eckstein in 1902. The recipe has been changed only once since 1896, when Borden, who bought out the Cracker Jack Company in the 20th century, exchanged white sugar for corn syrup in 1964. Lewis developed the product that we know as Cracker Jack. It was made with a dry, crispy molasses coating, which is a company secret. The product was described by the Chicago Tribune in 1896, and the original name of the product was 1896 Sensation. It was probably described as that's a cracker jack or that's a cracker jack and this was slang in the day for excellent it was more likely somebody said 
Das ist ausgezeichnet. The slogan, the more you eat, the more you want, was patented in 1896. In 1907, the company introduced the Cracker Jack Bears in their publicity campaign. This, was, this preceded the Sailor Boy, which we know about today. The bears were featured on promotional postcards. The, the bears uh, represented children's fun activities. Uh, they climbed the Statue of Liberty, they shook hands with Teddy Roosevelt, and they played baseball. Then the song, Take Me Out to the Ball Game, uh, was published in 1908, written by Jack Norworth and Albert von Tilzer. Neither man had ever attended a baseball game. The lyricist, Jack Norworth, inserted Cracker Jack to keep the rhyme. And this was probably the greatest pro bono advertising campaign in history. In 2004, the Yankees stopped selling Cracker Jack at Yankee Stadium and substituted Crunch and, Crunch and Munch, but the fans protested. So Cracker Jack was reinstated and today, uh, with today's ballpark menus, perhaps the song should be changed again to buy me some sushi and lobster rolls. Toys were first introduced in 1910. At first, they were aimed at adults, and the company added the label, a prize in every box in 1912, the same year that toys began to be aimed at children instead of adults. The metal toys were made in Chicago uh, by a company called Tootsie Toys, owned by the Dallas Brothers. This was the same company that made Monopoly game pieces. They also made paper toys, including Indian headdresses, paper dolls, and pictures of movie stars. They introduced baseball cards in 1914. Sailor Jack and his dog Bingo uh, were introduced in 1916 in the ads. Frederick's grandson, Robert Rukheim, was probably the inspiration for Sailor Jack. A young Robert died during childhood from either pneumonia or meningitis. His dog Bingo was described as a hybrid pup of questionable pedigree, just the sort that every boy loves perhaps inspired by Henry Eckstein's dog. Cracker, uh, uh, Sailor Jack and Bingo uh, first appeared in ads in 1960 and then in, on the boxes in 1918. The red, white, and blue theme were designed to show patriotism during World War I. Miss Angelus appeared on their marshmallow boxes. Uh, this was aimed to appeal to little girls. Miss Angelus wore a white paler sailor suit with puffy sleeves and a chef's hat. She was a companion for Sailor Jack in the ads. The company also made other products, including hunky dory bars and new wrinkle product. Now, these were gradually phased out to concentrate on Cracker Jack. Anti-German sentiment arose during World War I. Prior to World War I, Germany was considered America's most reputable immigrant group. But after the torpedoing of the Lusitania, anti-German hysteria broke out. The American Protective League was a secret organization founded in Chicago uh, to search for German spies. And Frederick and Lewis were suspected as uh, siding with the Germans. Frederick insulted members of the Illinois militia who visited his factory trying to recruit the workers to join the military. He refused to allow representatives of the military uh, on his property and during working hours. He kept a picture of von Hindenburg on his desk. Although he was a naturalized US citizen, uh, it was known that he had visited Germany several times since he immigrated, including 1895, 1905, and 1911. In order to counteract this anti-German sentiment, he advertised that Cracker Jack was an ideal wartime food. It did not consume any wheat or sugar, but was made from corn syrup and it could be eaten as a snack or as a breakfast cereal. The company adopted the patriotic red, white, and blue box. They encouraged men to enlist in the Navy like Sailor Jack and gave away free Uncle Sam's famous national songbooks filled with patriotic songs. They eliminated the German sounding name of the company and instead named the company Cracker Jack Company in 1922, shortly after the war. In 1910, the company began growing their own popcorn in Iowa. They produced 15 million pounds of popcorn annually. They developed their own strains of popcorn and peanuts. 
1930, the company used one fourth of all the popcorn in the world. And their need for popcorn affected the uh, world's commodity prices. In the 1920s, the brothers and uh, Henry Exxon opened a new factory on South Harrison and Peoria, and it occupied an entire city block. Here they were making 40 to 60 tons of candy every day in the early 20th century. And by 1930, Cracker Jack was sold internationally. The brothers and uh, Henry Eckstein uh, turned over the day-to-day -day operations of the company to their sons, Frederick Rukheim Jr. and Henry Eckstein Jr. The company opened a new factory near Midway Airport in 1931, located at 4866th Street at Cicero Avenue. The company was closed in 1966. This was a local landmark near Midway Airport and it was easily seen because of the giant Cracker Jack box shaped sign on the roof. It has been estimated that the company has given away 17, somewhere between 17 and 23 billion toys during the, uh, since Cracker Jack was in, uh, first came out. The company was sold to Frito Lay in 1997, and they are no longer made in Chicago. It is now made in Grand Rapids, Michigan. All of the Cracker Jack in the United States comes from Michigan. In April this year, the company introduced Cracker Jill to celebrate the women who break down barriers in sports. They came out with five different bags showing women of different skin colors, different ethnicities, and involved in different sports. The bags are only available at pro ballparks or by making a $5 donation to the Women's Sports Foundation. And the song, Take Me Out to the Ball Game, has been changed a little. Well, thank you. And let's get together again next month virtually. In the meantime, stay healthy, stay safe. And I look forward to our virtual meeting again next month.